We're joined now by Republican Senator Jerry Moran from Kansas, who serves on the Commerce Aviation Subcommittee. So, uh, Senator, in just under an hour, the Aviation Subcommittee will hold that hearing on airline safety. How does the news that we just got, that Boeing was very close to a software fix, change your view on how the FAA uh, oversees jets and airline safety? Well, it raises questions, uh, this development. I mean, it's good that, that Boeing was working on a fix, is working on a fix, and it's uh, apparently in the stages of being maybe available in the very near future. That's good news. The question it raises for me is, what was the motivation for Boeing believing they needed a fix? Uh, and should that have been communicated uh, differently than perhaps it was? We just learned about it today. But then secondly, what did the FAA know about the need for a fix uh, prior to that second crash? So it raises some issues. It's part of why we want to make decisions based upon facts, and I'm interested now to hear what the FAA acting administrator has to tell us uh, here momentarily. Plus, of course, the inspector general got outside view of what is the relationship with these facts as they relate to both Boeing and to the FAA. At the moment as it stands, Jerry, are you inclined to think that the FAA is unable to continue to regulate effectively Boeing or hasn't been thus far? Well, again, I think uh, it's easy to reach conclusions before you know all the facts, and that's mm. why we have a hearing, that's why we have an inspector general. Uh, but we also ought to take a step back and recognize that we have the, the safest air, air system in the world, that air transportation is safe. Uh, it, uh, it's a rarity. I mean, no accident is uh, ac acceptable, but it is a very safe mode of transportation. We need to do everything we can to improve on that. But before we reach, you know, any solid conclusions, again, we've raised, a, there's a lot of questions being raised. Uh, this breaking news is one of them. But uh, let's make certain that we put things in the right order. And for example, I was pleased to, to, to learn from the FAA acting administrator in a briefing last week that the, the grounding of the MAX was made not by a political figure, while the president announced it, it was made based upon science and, mm. and technology engineering at the FAA. And right. that's where we need to have these things rest, is not among us politicians, but among the, those who are the experts. We can improve upon their expertise, and that's what we're going to try to do today. Very quickly, what do you think you would need to see in order to be convinced that the 737 MAX can fly safely again? Would it be as simple as a software fix, or it needs to be something more? Well, I mean, I expect it to be a software fix, but again, I don't know all the facts about what, what transpired. Uh, that question, I think, can be better answered after we learn from the FAA Got and it. others what the facts are. Let's move away from your role, of course, on the Aviation Subcommittee, but you also serve okay. on the Commerce. Uh, you're a committee member there for the Commerce Committee. Give us your sense on what's happening in terms of the trade negotiations. Back front and center, as we know, some of the U.S. key negotiators are back in Beijing. Do you think that uh, a deal is getting closer? Are you optimistic on this front? Well, I care a lot about this issue as a Kansan. Uh, we live by what we export. China is a significant market. Uh, Mexico, therefore, and Canada, therefore, USMCA, NAFTA is important to us. This is how Kansans earn a living. I also chair the subcommittee that appropriates money for USTR. I had a conversation uh, just a couple of days ago with Ambassador Lighthizer. My point is that we need resolution quickly. Uh, we've been through a lot of pain uh, as a result, particularly in agriculture, as a result of this tariff battle. But we all, in addition to needing a resolution, we also need an, a, a long-term fix. If we've gone through all this pain, we don't want to concede uh, all the issues that are in the long term important to our trading relationship uh, with China. Um, I, I have the sense that there's an opportunity, a desire on the part of both parties to resolve the differences and to have this concluded, hmm. not within a matter of a couple of days, but within a matter of a couple of months. Got it. And very quickly, Senator, do you support any congressional efforts to rein in the president's or some of the president's power on trade? Senator Portman, for instance, introduced a bill that would require the Pentagon rather than commerce to justify a national security basis for possible new tariffs under Section 232. Well, why I haven't sponsored Senator Portman's bill, uh, I have sponsored other legislation and supported other legislation that gives Congress greater authority over the issue of, uh, of th these exemptions uh, or the, the tariff imposition. Uh, and so, yes, I want, uh, I, I want to make certain that these uh, tariffs are imposed for the purpose for which Congress uh, indicated, mm. which in this case is the national security of our country.
We thank you so much, Republican Senator Jerry Moran from Kansas. We'll let you get to that hearing now, and we look forward to your findings from it.